I can't tell you how honored we are to have you on our faculty this summer, Professor Wentworth. Thank you, Dean. My honor, really. Your Shakespearean seminar is going to be the highlight of the entire summer season. This is the first time Brad's ever taught in a American university. It should be quite an experience for him. He'll find it isn't much different. Students are the same the world over. Well, as a matter of fact, I feel quite at home here already. We made a little tour of the campus this afternoon. And on a smaller scale, it reminded me a little of Cambridge. Well, our school is one of the oldest in the country, and we're very proud of the tradition behind it. I don't hold with these new schools that look like department stores. <laughs> Huh? Really? But here I am, monopolizing your time. Now, come with me and I'll introduce you around. Uh, you go with the dean, dear. I think I'll get a cup of tea. But I get it for you. No, no, no. I'll join you in a moment. Huh. Excuse me, but don't I know you from somewhere? Perhaps. At least I know you. Professor Bradbury Wentworth, Ph.D., recently arrived here from England to teach a summer seminar on Shakespeare. But I remember you best as Captain Bradbury Wentworth, British intelligence. Hello, Brad. Kay. Kay Evans. It's Kay Murray now. This is a wonderful surprise. Well, what are you doing here? Well, my husband's on the Board of Regents at the university. And incidentally, they think they really made a coup getting you for their summer session. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. When I first heard you were going to lecture here, I, I knew there couldn't be two Brad Wentworths. You haven't changed a bit. Are you? Let me see, how long has it been? Ten years? About that. Come on, then. We've got a lot of catching up to do. I can't get over it running into you like this. Mind the pipe? Not at all. You know... With all the bad things you go through in a war, it's amazing how you only remember the pleasant times. Like that grill in London where we all used to meet. <laughs> all right, John. <laughs> you Yanks do have the best law attack bomber. You guys in intelligence won't argue about anything. Oh, we just like to humor you so that you'll keep inviting us over to your mess hall. Oh, yeah. What time's your date, you? Yeah, any minute now. And wait till you meet her. The most beautiful nurse in the service. <laughs> That's what you said about the last one. Hey, here she comes now. Hi, John. I'm sorry I'm late. I got held up at the hospital a little. You could keep me waiting all night and I wouldn't complain. Ooh, that Air Force line. Okay, meet a couple of friends of mine. Major Steve Babcock and Captain Brad Wentworth. Kay Evans. Nice to meet you. Drink. Please, with soda. Gentlemen, excuse me. Hi, Keith. How about a little service? Huh? Yes, sir, Captain Parker. Scotch and soda, please. Scotch and soda. Yes? Hold it a minute, please. It's for you, Captain Parker. Hmm. Captain Parker speaking. Yes. <clears throat> Certainly. Right. I understand. Got it. Yes, we met John here one night, and, oh, well, we've been friends ever since. Friendly, except when we're arguing about which is the better, the British or the American theater. Who usually wins? I do, because when the going gets rough, I drag in Shakespeare. Oh? Are you a student or a fan? Oh, here you go, Kay. Look, I'm afraid we'd better skip dinner tonight. Kay, I'm due back at the base. Got a call while I was at the bar. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, John. But don't worry about me. I'll get a cab back to my quarters. Yeah? I'm sorry, too, but say la guerre. Look, why don't you have dinner with Steve and me? That is, if John doesn't mind. Mm, wonderful idea. Hat better go. I'll call you in a couple of days, Kay. Good night. Goodbye. Bye, John. Look. Well, that's very nice. We have dinner now? Well, uh, you two run along. I've got some work I have to do. No nonsense. You're staying here. No, I really can't. Well, it was nice meeting you, Lieutenant. See you again, I hope. Good night. Nice meeting you, Major. Goodbye. Night, Brad. Hi, uh, Steve. Well, I'm afraid you're stuck with me. I'm afraid it's the other way around, Captain. Well, why don't we make the best of a delightfully bad situation? <sighs> Let. <laughs> uh, in the death scene from Othello, this actor Kirby used to die so beautifully that the audience would yell and cheer, die again, die again, Kirby. <laughs> 
Get up, bow, and die all over again. He became known as Die Again Kirby. <laughs> Brad, that's wonderful. I love to hear you talk about the theater. Glad to find someone who appreciates it the way you do. I only wish I had your knowledge about it. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't think. Would you prefer coffee? No, tea's fine, really. You drink it all the time, of course. In self-defense. Frankly, uh, I can't get used to your British coffee. I never could understand what all the fuss was about until I tried your coffee. Now I go into the American canteen for a cup every afternoon. Better be careful, you'll end up in the U.S. Army. <laughs> Say when. When? That's what we do in the winter. And in the summertime, Dad barbecues every Sunday afternoon in the backyard. It stays so hot at night, we go up to the lake and swim. Sounds very nice. You know, I think I'll finish my studies in Indiana when the war's over. I've rambled on so about home, I've made myself homesick. I'm sorry about that. I enjoyed the ramblings out. You know, this has been one of my more pleasant dinners. Why don't we do it again tomorrow night? And we can do the theater, too. I can get tickets. I'd love it. Good. Well, I... I'd better be getting back to the hospital. I've got the early shift in the morning. Well, so long as I'm seeing you tomorrow night, I suppose I can let you go. Look! My heavens, what time is it? I had no idea it was so late. I'll never be able to get up in the morning. I wonder where the waiter is. You can find me, Captain Wentworth. Everybody else is gone now. Thanks for taking me. My pleasure. It was good, but too many of the first-rate actors have been called into service. I've seen it done better. Well, you know too much about it. When you're like me, you can just sit back, take your shoes off, and enjoy it. I don't want to sound like a pompous critic. It wasn't bad. Well, what'll it be? Hungry? Not very. How about a little walk first? Okay. It's not at all foggy tonight. Oh, we don't worry about that. When you're here long enough, you develop a sort of private built-in radar. Tired? We can catch a taxi at the other end of the park. I'm not ready to get back to the city hubbub yet. Hope Hamlet didn't make you feel blue. It does me once in a while. No, it didn't. Not getting homesick again. That's all gone. Let's sit a while. Look, I don't want to be a bore, but there's something bothering you, huh? You're not a bore, Brad. You're a sweet, sensitive guy, and... And I hope you're going to say you're fond of me, because I'm quite impressed with you, you know. You are? Very much. In fact, I have a whole campaign mapped out to sweep you off your feet. You're not supposed to let me know you're doing it. Oh, that's right. Well, I never was much good at that type of thing anyway. Don't worry about it. You're doing fine. My schedule's a little off. I didn't have the park bench down till the third day. Maybe you can tear up the schedule. Just did. This may seem a little fast. I love you very much. Do you, Brad? I don't think it's the war and the uniforms and... Well, you know what I mean. Look, darling, I know the war does strange things to one's emotions. All I can go by is how I feel. But I love you completely. I feel the same way. That's what I was looking sad about before. Oh, well, that's a fine compliment. Not that. There's something I haven't told you about. There's no one else, is there? No, of course not. I just found out today I'm being transferred in the morning. Where to? The hospital at Highbridge. Oh, that's not far. I'll come up Sunday and we'll have dinner. 
wonderful. I felt pretty low thinking I wouldn't get to see you again. I'll be off duty Sunday. As the train gets into Highbridge about 1.30, I'll meet you at the American Road Cross Club near the station at 2 o'clock. I'll be waiting, darling. I'm glad I found you. I'm glad I found you. You better give me your new address in case anything happens. 67th Field Hospital, APO 475. Got a piece of paper? I think so. 67th Field Hospital, APO 475. 67th Field 475. <laughs> nice looking girl. Who is she? I don't know why I keep it. May I have it? Oh, I look terrible there. That was taken two years ago, and my hair's all... Oh, I love it just the same. Come on, now. All right. But I'll have a better one taken and send it to you. I think this looks fine. This is a terrible picture, really. I have to have some new ones made. Oh, they're fine-looking children. Two boys. We've got two girls, you know. No, I didn't know. Do you have a picture with you? I probably have. <laughs> what am I saying? Of course I have. Here they are. Oh, Brad, they're really lovely. They are rather nice, aren't they? They're staying with Susan's mother during the summer. We miss them quite a lot. I know. I always can't wait to send mine off to summer camp, then spend half the time running up visiting. George is the same way. George? Oh, your husband. I met him during lunch at the Regents today. I liked him. George is a wonderful guy. We're very happy together. We got married overseas, you know. Oh? The commanding officer at the base was awfully nice. He gave us a week's leave, so we went up to Scotland on our honeymoon. Lovely country up there. Yes, it is. We got an awful ribbing when we got on the train. They painted a big just married sign on the back of the jeep that drove us to the station. We hadn't the slightest idea what everyone was laughing at. <laughs> Kay. Uh, it's a little late, but I'm sorry I didn't make it to Highbridge that Sunday. You know, the war and all. Things happen. Yes, isn't it funny the way things turn out? Here we are, both married to two different people, and that night we went to the theater, we thought we were so much in love. Yes. Well, anyway, you don't have to apologize for standing me up ten years ago. It is silly, isn't it? Especially with everything having turned out so well for both of us. It looks like we've both been very fortunate. I was just thinking the same thing the other day as I saw your picture in the paper. So you were rather happy I didn't make it that Sunday. Well, happy isn't exactly the right word. Relieved would be better. See, I, I was wondering if we hadn't been a little impetuous. By Sunday, I, I was rather apprehensive about meeting you. May I give you a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I'm waiting for someone. He's coming in from London. Is the train a little late? Well, the only train is already in. I picked up some supplies from about an hour ago. Oh. Well, is there a phone I can call London on? There's one on my desk, but uh, it's for official business only. Oh. Yours is official, isn't it? Why, yes. Go ahead and use it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Operator, I'd like London, please. Trafalgar, 7342. Yes, thank you. Hello? I'd like to speak to Captain Wentworth, please. Oh, well, this is Lieutenant K. Evans calling. Did he leave on pass for Highbridge? Transferred? But where? But this is important. Surely you can tell me where he's been transferred. Well, then he must have left a message for me. This is Lieutenant K. Evans, E-V-A... I see. 
Nothing at all. Well, uh, thank you very much, Corporal. Bye. I couldn't help overhearing, but don't feel too badly. Remember, the ratio's 50 to 1 in our favor over here. You're right. There's no reason to get upset. Thanks. Thanks for the use of the phone. Actually, you did me a favor when you didn't show up at Highbridge that Sunday. I didn't mind a bit, because I met George that same night. I'm glad it all turned out so well. I felt a bit bad about it at the time. No need. That was a long time ago when we were very young. You sound positively ancient. Well, I'm getting there. Two children, husband on the Board of Regents at the university, house in the suburbs, and... And, you know, I love the whole thing. It shows, too. You're even more beautiful today. That was nice, Brad. Your wife is very lovely. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet her when you came in. She is. You'll like her, too. She's really the reason I'm supposed to be a big man on Shakespeare. How's that? Well, she charms all the important people who come to visit us, and they leave thinking I'm brilliant. <laughs> I'll keep your secret. You will? Good. Did you two meet during the war? Just after. Susan's the sister of one of the men I was in service with. As a matter of fact, you might remember him. Steve Babcock. He was the one who was with me the night I met you. Let's see. The Major who left in such a hurry. That's the one. I'd forgotten all about that. You had him well trained. He took off like a big bird that night. He left of his own accord. I didn't say a word. And all these years, I thought it was love at first sight. And you kicked him when I wasn't looking. Well, maybe I did give him a little nudge. I'm surprised he let a wolf like you marry his sister. Oh, really, Kay? You know I wasn't a wolf. You mean you were really serious when you made love to me that night? I suppose I thought I was, at first. Then, like you, I was looking forward to our meeting with apprehension. You don't have to be so happy so early, do you? All your fault, old man. If you'd come along to dinner the other night, this might never have happened. <laughs> Who are you kidding? From the message I got from you, I would have been shot if I didn't take off. Oh, nothing to worry about. A saber wound to the most. Oh, then if I escaped with my life, go ahead and whistle. You know, it's odd. Well, it took an American army nurse to make your uniform look like it wasn't an old tweed suit. You know, you really must have it bad. What time is your train locking, Bar? Nine. Jeff's driving me over to the station in the lorry. I better go meet him now. See you later. Have fun. Hello, Major Babcock speaking. Yes. Uh, yes, he's here too. All right, Sergeant. Goodbye. What's up? We're wanted at headquarters immediately. Oh, no, but I've got a date. All leaves and passes have been cancelled. I better call Kay. No calls out either. I can't leave her sitting there waiting for me. Well, there's nothing you can do about it now. But it sounds like this is it, Fred. Yeah. We've been expecting it any day now. That's too bad. <laughs> you were almost out that door. At least we could have had today together. Ah, uh, don't worry. You'll catch up with a late one.
brother, cousin, Captain Wentworth. Captain Wentworth? Oh. What's the matter? The letter I sent to Kay was returned, marked transferred, forwarding address unknown. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, why, I forgot. <laughs> Here's something that ought to cheer you up. Captain Bradbury Wentworth will report to Shafe Headquarters in London on July the 27th, 1944. Do you know what this assignment's about? Only that you were requested for a staff job back there. When do I go? Well, I've arranged for your flight back with operations this afternoon. Will I have some time before reporting? You will. Two days leave after you reach London. Fine. Thanks. Better get my things ready. Smoking in the outer lobby only, sir. John, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, boy. You know, I sure surprised when you called the base today. I got in this afternoon. Do you have any news for me? You're in luck. She's still in England. Where? Here's the address. 52nd General, APO 789. It's at Birkenhead. Thanks. straight now? Yeah. Uh, be right with you, sir. Right. Pick him up in front of the officer's day room and drive him to the train. Yeah. You got the jeep fixed up the way the old man wanted it? Sure thing. Bye. You in the right place, sir? This is an American hospital. I know. I'm looking for a nurse. Lieutenant K. Evans. Well, she's stationed here all right, but you're going to have to hurry if you want to see her. She's just about to take off on a week's leave. Oh, where can I get her? Walk up the ramp on the right, turn to the left, and at the end you'll find the officer's day room. She'll be leaving there shortly. Thanks, Sergeant. You're welcome. Kiss the bride for me. Bride? Huh? Well, you knew she got married yesterday, didn't you? Oh, sure. We're, we're old friends. I just wanted to congratulate her. Well, you better hurry, sir. She'll be leaving in about ten minutes. Right. Thanks again, Sergeant. Bye. I thought about trying to locate you, but somehow I never got around to it. Mm, it's just as well we didn't take each other seriously, Brad. I'd be lost half the time in that London fog. Oh, you'd develop radar like the natives by this time. Uh, uh, there you are. I was quite sure I'd lost you. Darling, I want you to meet Kay. That is, Mrs. George Murray. Hello, Mrs. Murray. How do you do? I was just telling Brad how fortunate we are to be able to welcome both of you. As soon as you're settled, we'd like to have you over for dinner. How oh, very kind of you. Thank you. Been fun talking with you, Brad. And very nice meeting you. Bye. Goodbye. Did you think I deserted you? I got a little involved. Don't tell me she's a professor. No, of course not. Her husband's on the board of regents here. Oh, clever of you to attach yourself so quickly to the wife of a regent. <laughs> Darndest thing. She's a girl I knew in London during the war. She's awfully attractive. Did you know her well? No, not really. I only saw her twice in my life. 